So we'll start off in a comfortable seat or laying down, whatever's best for you. We'll start by closing our eyes and simply going inward in this moment. Just taking a few moments just to let go of any tension we notice in the body, letting go of any rush, any sense of needing to get into this call. Just taking a moment to get grounded. For me, the most grounding thing is always to check in with the bodily senses. You can check in with your sense of touch. You can feel the earth beneath you rising up to support you. Feel the clothing on your skin. Feel the air on your skin. Feel the breath flowing through your nostrils. Delivering fresh prana energy to every cell in your body. My friends, if the rest of our lives ever get complicated, our yoga practice is so simple. It's just a sacred time and space just to be a human being, not a human doing, a spirit having a human experience. Yeah, yeah. We can check in with our body. Everybody we can check in with how we're feeling within. We honor our body with some movement and some stillness. We honor our mind by giving it a break from thoughts and worries. We can let our mind be present for this next hour. We can give our mind the simple job of watching each inhale breath and each exhale breath. And we can honor our heart and our spirit by setting an intention for this day, this time in your journey. On an inhale, slightly lift your chest. <clears throat> exhale, slightly tuck your chin. Inhale, circle sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. My friends, Let's take a moment together to set an intention. This intention could be one word or a phrase or a feeling. It's whatever energy you would like to welcome into your life, into your being, whatever energy you would like to create within. Whatever energy is the most helpful and healing for you at this time in your journey. Together, let's breathe in this intention. Exhale, H, A. You can release your hands. You can open your eyes. And let's begin our practice in child's pose on the back half of your back. In child's pose, you can bring your two big toes to touch. You can spread your knees out as wide as you like. I usually go about the width of the yoga mat. If you go narrower, you can stretch your back a little bit more. If you go wider, you can stretch your hips a little bit more. You can always adjust. Sit your hips back onto your heels. Stretch your arms out long. And come to rest your third eye center on the mat, resting the bridge of your nose on the mat. Taking a moment here to get grounded in this posture, connecting to the earth, connecting to your breath. We're here not to do anything, but to feel what it's like to be a human being alive and well in a body. Feeling the breath flowing in and out, delivering that life force energy to every cell in your body. Let's begin our practice with three cleansing breaths. You can exhale out all of your air here. Take a deep inhale through your nose for four, three, two, 
Open mouth, H-A. Take another deep inhale through your nose. Expand your lower back. Expand the sides of your ribs. Open mouth, H-A. And take your deepest inhale through your nose, filling up every cell with fresh prana energy. Open mouth, H-A. Letting it all go. You can close your lips now and breathe in through your nose. And out through your nose. In through your nose. And out through your nose. My friends, we are present now with the breath. And for this next hour, I invite you to stay with the breath, to meditate on the breath. And if you ever notice your mind wandering to something outside of the moment, you can come back to this breath with no judgments on yourself. That is how we practice meditation. In child's pose, let's thread the needle. Lift your body up an inch and thread your right arm underneath your left. Some yogis like to add in this half bind here with the left arm coming behind the lower back, if that feels good to you. As you inhale, breathe space behind your right shoulder. Every exhale, start to deactivate your muscles, relaxing more body weight into your shoulder and your hips. The word hatha means sun and moon. So this practice really is all about the yin and the yang. Even our breath has that yin and yang. The inhales are the yang energy, the expansion. The exhales are the yin, the softening, the deepening. Return back to center child's pose. Then thread your left arm underneath your right. You can set your left ear on the mat. Maybe you'd like to add in that half line with the right arm, if that feels good to you. As you inhale, breathe some space behind your left shoulder. Every exhale, let gravity take over a little bit more, letting your bones weigh a little bit heavier into the mat. And remember, my friends, this is your practice. You can always modify poses. It's about being kind to yourself. Return back to center, child posture for one last round of mindful breath here. Table top pose. Shift forward so that your hands are under your shoulders and knees under your hips. We're really in no rush today in this practice. Just here to feel each pose. Being present in this moment. Let's start off by letting our head hang heavy, and just rocking the hips from side to side. Just welcoming a little bit of movement this morning into your hips, your spine, your shoulders, your neck. I always think of this as like a side to side version of a cat and cow. But you can start to add in some free movements here. Maybe you'd like to roll the shoulders a little bit. Maybe you like to roll the hips a little bit in like a figure eight motion. Or you can sit your hips back onto your heels. I like to do that and have fingertips on the mat for a little back stretch. There really is no wrong way, my friends. Remember that yoga isn't just about listening to the teacher. It's about listening to your body and yourself. It's about getting in touch with the wisdom within you. Long knee back and tabletop for some cats and cows. Inhale, cow pose, eyes up, tailbone up. Exhale, cat hollow and round your spine. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat, separate your shoulder blades as you press away. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Last one here, inhale, cow. This time, tuck your toes underneath your feet and exhale to downward facing dog. This is our one and only downward dog of this Hatha class. So here in downward dog, we're using this as a little warm up. 
So you can start to walk your dog this morning, pedaling out both feet, marching in place. You can take whatever warm-up movements are feeling good today. I sometimes keep my legs straight and rock the hips from side to side. You can take some knee bending squats. You can pick up one leg and then the other, maybe finding a half scorpion. Just a little intuitive warm up this morning. Greeting your body with some love and gratitude when you check in with yourself today. Now let's make our way to the front of the mat. Inhale, lift your heels high. Exhale, drop your knees low. And walk your feet in between your hands. We will meet in a forward fold. Now separate your feet by six inches. You can use your two fists as a really good measuring stick for that six inches. Ragdoll pose. Your opposite hand can cradle your opposite elbow. I'm going to walk my ribs down the front of my thighs once or twice if you want to see that technique. Lifting up and then lowering the ribs lower. Lifting up, setting the ribs lower. That is what I call draping your torso over your legs, creating a nice release through your lower back. Feel free to rock from side to side if that feels good. Your knees can be bent or straight. Release your hands back to your mat and heel toe your feet back together to touch. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, salute the sun, drop your hips, eyes up, rise up, and circle sweep to greet this new day. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Close your eyes. Take another moment to come back to the intention that you set at the beginning of this practice. Breathe in your intention. Exhale, let it go and release your hands. Yogis, we find ourselves here in Tadasana, mountain pose. It's a very simple posture. We simply stand with the posture we want to bring into the rest of our lives. Chest up, shoulders back. Every inhale, feel your spine lengthening. Every exhale, root down through your heels. Getting so grounded here. This posture is our standing meditation. We come to this posture between all others to let go of any rush, to let go of any thoughts, to simply feel this breath in this moment. Mindfulness is the practice of letting the moment be perfectly enough as it is. Seeing what's so good about the here and now. Circle sweep your arms overhead. Interlace all 10 fingers, releasing only the index fingers towards the sky. I am well known for calling this the love laser gun grip. This only shoots love and light. Find your love laser gun grip overhead and activate your mula bandha, your root block, by squeezing your glutes, squeezing your legs, tucking your tailbone under for your foundation. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, tick-tock warm up from right to left. You can go in your own rhythm and flow here as we warm up for Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. You can see why it's going to be called Half Moon Pose as we make this crescent shape with our body. The idea of this posture is to keep the strong Mula Bandha, the root lock, squeezing the legs together. To keep the spine long and lengthened, preserving the space between each vertebrae, and we're here to create a tremendous stretch on each side of your body. Let's meet back at center for Ardha Chandrasana. Activate your Mula Bandha, your root block, tucking the tailbone under. Inhale, lengthen your body. Exhale, bend to the right. Bump your hips to the left. We're here to create a tremendous stretch through the left side of your body. Really firmly connect to the earth through the left knife edge of your foot. Continue to bump your hips to the left as you reach your straight, energetic arms to the right. You can press your left ribs up in that direction. We're expanding the whole side of the body, not collapsing to the right, but lifting up and to the left. 
Breathe into the left side of your body. Lift your chin a little bit. Slightly peel your left shoulder back. Find your furthest expression here in five, four, three, two, one. Change back to center. You can wiggle out your knees in between sides for a little release of your lower back and hips. Amazing job, my friends. Second side, activate your mula bandha, root lock, tucking your tailbone under. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend to the left. Bump your hips to the right. Make this about the stretch of the right side body as you firmly connect through the knife edge of your right foot. Bump your hips to the right. Expand your ribs up and to the right, pressing in that direction. Slightly peel your top shoulder back. Lift your chin. Breathe into this stretch. Just here to feel each pose. No rush. Find your deepest expression here in five, four, three, two, one. Change back to center. We're going to do our one and only back bend of this practice. You have three options for the back bend. I'm going to list them from the lightest to the deepest option. For the first back bend, you can do a supported back bend with hands in your imaginary back pockets. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you could have 90 degree cactus arms for a heart opener. And if you want to go the deepest, you just keep the love laser gun grip. Activate your mula bandha, root lock. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, press your hips forward. Press your heart high. Let your head fall back and walk your eyes back along the ceiling, maybe to the wall behind you, maybe to the floor. Keep your breath flowing. Inhale, rise. Exhale, forward fold. Touch your toes. So friends, we're coming into a Pada Hastasana. And I'm gonna take our sweet time getting set up here. So, just like we did in the ragdoll, walk your rib cage down the front of your legs once or twice to create the drape of your lower back. The insides of your feet should still be touching if that's comfortable for you. I'll show you the grips from the lightest to the deepest stretch. You can hold the backs of your thighs. You can hold the backs of your calves. You can give your legs a hug. Or coming deeper into that classic Padahasvasana, you can place your elbows behind your knees you can hold the backs of each ankle or lift each heel and put four fingers under each heel for maximum leverage. Tuck your chin to look at your knees. Inhale, press your legs straight. Exhale, pull the crown of your head towards the floor. Inhale, press your legs more straight. Exhale, pull the front of your face towards the front of your leg. Take three more rounds of breath in that same cycle. Trust yourself. You are in control. You are in control of this wonderful stretch of your hamstrings and your back. Release. Hands on your hips. Lift your chest, chin and eyes. Tadasana, mountain pose. Simply coming back to the breath. Back to the standing. Meditation. Our next pose is Utkatasana, awkward chair pose. Raise both arms parallel to the floor, nice and engaged like you're shooting fire out of your fingertips. Separate your feet by six inches. That is roughly your hip width distance. I'll be giving you guys a side view of this posture. This is a three part posture. For part one, inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, take your seat. In this three-part posture, here in part one, we send our hips back and down, maybe with the goal of having your thighs ending up parallel to the floor, if that feels good. Draw your core up and in, bringing the navel towards the spine. Can you slightly lift your toes off the mat to connect more through your heels? Sit a little more back and a little more down. You are so strong here. For seven, six, five, four, three, two. Our arms stay up and we rise. Part two, recommit to the straight arms. Then rise up to the balls of your feet like you're wearing invisible high heeled shoes. Keep your back straight. 
Keep your heels high. Start to bend your knees down and forward and slide your straight back down an imaginary wall behind you. You're finding your fullest step for today. Once you're there, can you lift your left heel higher and hold it up? Lift your right heel higher and hold it up. You want your shoulders stacked right over your hips. Nice straight back. Rise 5% and hold. Rise another 5% and hold. Rise in slow motion over three, two. Arms stay up, heels come down. Part three, final part, recommit to the straight arms. Now pigeon toe your feet in a little bit, bringing the toes in and the heels out. Lift your heels one inch and squeeze your knees together. Start to press your knees down and forward. Slide your straight back down an imaginary wall. Finding your fullest depth, keeping your shoulders stacked right over your hips. Squeeze your knees together. If your knees feel good today, start to bounce. You can pause on the upward bounce. Rise 5% and hold. Rise in slow motion over three, two, one, release, tadasana, mountain pose. After each pose, we can let it wash over us. We can go inward and feel the effect that pose had on our body, our mind, our spirit. So often in life, we are in a rush to the next moment. We don't stop and smell the roses. We don't stop and see what's so great right here, right now. Garudasana, eagle pose. Circle sweep your arms. Identify your right arm and bring it under your left. So if you want to make classic eagle arms, you've got the right arm under the left and the palms are facing each other. They're not exactly symmetrical because one's lower, but they're facing each other. If that isn't comfortable for you, you can have the opposite shoulder grip here. So whatever is gonna be best for you today. You have your eagle arm. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, take your seat. Then bring your right leg up and over your left, creating your eagle legs. Some yogis will wrap the right foot behind the left calf, or we're just working towards that. You can lift your chest, lean back, and then sit a little bit deeper with your legs, deeper into the eagle perch. Take a few rounds of mindful breath here. When we get into a pose, we can feel the pose from within, staying curious as to where the breath is flowing, creating space. Now you can choose to hold here or sleep in an eagle. Inhale, lift your elbows. Exhale, hollow and round your spine, connecting your elbows to your knees. You've created a cat spine, like from the cats and cows. You can breathe some space into your mid back here. One of the best stretches for the low and mid back. You can hold here or Soaring eagles can take flight. Unwrap your right leg. Extend it back, parallel to the floor. Lengthen your whole body into an arrow, flying towards all of your dreams. Let's all rise back into eagle. We'll seal this side of the posture with one last round of mindful breath. Change. Circle sweep your arms. Identify your left arm and bring it under your right, making the other version of the eagle arms, the opposite side. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, take your seat. Then bring your left leg up and over your right, creating the eagle legs, maybe tucking the foot behind the cow. Lift your chest, lean back, and sit deeper. Squeeze your arms. Squeeze your legs. This pose is giving yourself a big hug. It's wonderful for your internal organs and it's releasing the back of your shoulders. You can hold here or sleeping eagle. Inhale, lift your elbows. 
Exhale, hollow and round your spine. You'll find a new drishti point on the mat or maybe on your forearm. You can breathe through your back. Creating expansive space in the low and mid back here in this beautiful cat spine. Now soaring eagles, you can take flight here. Unwrap your left leg, extend it back. We want to be active here, lift and lengthen and breathe. Beautiful, let's all rise back up to our eagle. We can seal this posture with a mindful breath. Release, inhale, circle, sweep. Exhale, forward, fold. Now separate your feet by six inches once again for Padangustasana, toe grabbing pose. Take your two peace fingers of each hand, the first two fingers, and wrap them around your big toes. Just like before, you can walk your ribs down the front of your legs to create the release, the drape of your lower back. Tuck your chin to look at your knees. Inhale to press your legs a little straighter. Exhale, pull, with elbows going to the right and left, hold that depth. Inhale, press your legs more straight. Exhale, pull more. Take four more rounds of mindful breath here. I find this to be a more user-friendly variation of the first Padahastasana. I find this to be one of the best ways for a deep stretch of your hamstrings, glutes, and lower back. You're decompressing your spine with this pull. Release, hands on your hips. Lift your chest, chin and eyes. Step your feet back to meet. Tadasana, mountain pose. Simply feeling the breath. And my friends, now is a wonderful time for our first official water break of practice. Cheers, my friends. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is a great way to start out our day. Know that you can take a water break whenever you'd like, but it's fun to have some water breaks together. When you're ready, you can find yourself in Tadasana, mountain pose. Always getting grounded before we begin. Taking that time to feel the breath, to feel the earth beneath you. No rush, we are here together. It's here for this human experience. Our next four poses are standing balancing postures from Hatha. So I'm gonna cue them step by step by step. Just go as far into the pose as you want to go today. Remember that people work on Hatha Yoga for a lifetime, so there's no rush to perfect every pose. It's a yoga practice, not a yoga perfect. Starting off with Dandayamana Janu Shirshasana, standing forehead to knee pose, fortify your left leg, simply hugging the muscles to the bone to feel the connection of the left foot into the earth. Lift your right knee to the height of your right hip. Now this is our part one. I recommend you stay here if you want to build your balance and your strength. If you're going further into the pose, you can take hold of your right knee and draw it up and in for a nice stretch of your right glute and low back. If you want to go further, move your grip to your shin, your foot, or the final grip, interlacing all 10 fingers under your foot. If you're going further, inhale, lift your chest to stand tall, and then exhale, kick. Start to pull your elbows low underneath your calf. Your final expression invites your forehead to meet your knee. Your drishti point will shift to the mat below you as you bring your chin to your chest, your forehead to your knee, and breathe through your back for five, four, three, two. Let's all meet back in our part one. Release, Tadasana. Mountain pose. 
taking the time between each posture to let it go and to come back to center. Second side, fortify your right leg. Lift your left knee to the height of your left hip and flex your left toes up so that your left foot is active. To build your balance and strength. If you're going further, take hold of your right knee and draw it up and in for a nice stretch. If you wanna go further, your grip can move to your shin, your foot, or interlace all 10 fingers underneath your foot. Going further, inhale, lift your chest, and exhale, kick. Start to pull your elbows low underneath your calf. Your final expression invites your forehead to meet your knee. You'll find a new drishti on the mat. Your forehead and knee can meet in the middle as you breathe through your back. For five, four, three, two. Let's all meet back in part one. Release. Tadasana. Mountain pose. Let's take some shoulder rolls together here. On an inhale, roll your shoulders up and forward. Exhale, down and back. Inhale, up and forward. Exhale, down and back. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Our next posture is Uttita Hasta Padamustasana, standing and toe grabbing pose. We're gonna find the same part one. Fortify your left leg strong into the earth. Lift your right knee to the height of your right hip. Flex your right toes up. Now you have two options for this pose. For the slightly easier option, the right hand comes to the right knee. For the slightly more challenging option, peace fingers wrap around your right big toe. Raise your left arm high. If you have your knee, you'll open up like this. If you have your toe, kick forward first, and then open up. Stand tall. Become expansive. Take up space and breathe here for five, four, three, two. Let's all meet back in part one, this time with both arms up. Warrior three, kick your right leg back, reach forward, creating a capital letter T shape with your body. So strong here. Rise back up to part one. Lift your right knee, lean back, and kick your right leg for three, two, one. Release. Tadasana, mountain pose. Feeling the space between each posture. Those spaces between are just as important, just as sacred and healing as the postures themselves. Second side, fortify your right leg. Lift your left knee, flex your left toes. Now your left hand can come to your left knee or peace fingers wrap around the left big toe. Raise your right arm high. If you have your toe, kick forward first. And everyone open up like a lotus flower blossoming. Lift your heart, expand yourself, take up space. You are radiating your beautiful positive energy for five, four, three, two. Let's all meet back in part one, both arms up. Warrior three, send it back. Create this capital letter T shape. Yogis, we are warriors of the light. We are strong and humble. We're here to help raise the vibration of this planet. We do this together. Rise back up to your part one. Lift your left knee. Lean back and kick for three, two, one. Release. Tadasana. Mountain pose. Together we pause to breathe. Our next pose is Dandamana Dhanurasana, standing bow pulling pose. Circle sweep your arms. Leave your left arm high in the air and drop your right arm beside you like you're holding a tray. Now the way that we reach back to take hold of the foot is very important for your shoulder. Your thumb will point backwards the entire time as you reach back to pick up your foot from the inside. 
It is okay to hold the side of the outside of the foot. That's okay. What we don't want to see is turning the thumb, internally rotating the shoulder and holding like that. See how my shoulder is turned in? Very possible that I could hurt my shoulder. External rotation, very healthy for the shoulder. So externally rotate, thumb points back. You reach up, reach back to pick up the right foot from the inside. Bring your knees together. Start to peel your right shoulder back. Start to kick your right leg. Feel the knee leaving from behind first, then start to charge your body down. We'll take 10 seconds here to explore this posture. The more you kick, the more your foot will rise up from behind your head. Breathing here for three, two, one. Release. Tadasana. Mountain pose. Second side. Circle sweep your arms. Leave your right arm high and drop your left arm beside you like you're holding a tray. Just like before, keep the thumb pointing backwards the whole time as you reach back to pick up the left foot from the inside. It is okay to hold it from the outside too. Bring your knees together. Start to peel your left shoulder back. Start to kick your left leg. See how the knee is leaving from the body and start to charge your body down. Take me 10 seconds here to play and explore. And breathe. For five, four, three, two, one. Release, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. We come back to our center. In yogis, just like we get better at each pose, the more we practice, we get better at Tadasana as well. We get better at coming back to center. We create a habit in our mind. We create a neural pathway to the present moment through the breath. And that can stay with you all of your life. If you are stressed out at any point, just pause, take a few breaths. You can always find your way back to home, back to the peaceful center within. Yogis, let's step to the very back edge of our mat for Pula Nandasana, standing balancing stick pose. Circle sweep your arms to a love laser gun grip overhead. Take a three foot step with your right. Rise to the ball of your left. Charge your body down and kick your back leg high, making a capital letter T shape with your body. Reach your fingers forward. Reach your toes back. Breathe. Then bring your hands to your heart center, and your arms can open up and sweep back like airplane wings. Notice the shift in the balance. Now, standing splits, you can drop your hands to the mat. Lower your torso toward the mat. Kick your back leg as high as you can. You can work your forehead to your knee. You can take handstand hops. You can bring your right hand to your calf if you would like. You could put both hands on your calf to challenge your balance. Whatever you choose, kick your back leg high for three, two, one. Release. Tadasana, mountain pose, anywhere on your mat. Feeling that pose wash over you. Feeling yourself alive and well in this sacred moment you created. Let's return to the back edge of the mat for the second side of Pula Dandasana standing balancing stick. Circle sweep your arms to a love laser gun grip. Take a three foot step with your left leg. Rise to the ball of your right foot. Charge your body down and kick your back leg high. You are an arrow flying towards all of your dreams. If you believe it, you can achieve it. You set your mind to it, you'll bring it to reality. Bring your hands to heart center. Arms can open up and sweep back like airplane wings. Together we are flying high. If we ever fly through clouds, we know there's always blue skies waiting for us on the other side. Standing splits, lower your torso. 
Kick your back leg high. You can work forehead to knee. You can put your one or both hands on your calf to challenge your balance. Maybe you're taking your handstand hops. Kick your back leg high for three, two, one. Release. Tadasana anywhere on your mat. Simply feeling the breath. But next up, let's step to the very front of the mat and take a quarter turn to the left. We're setting up for the pose that has my favorite Sanskrit name, Dandayamana Vipada Pakta Pashimottanasana. Circle sweep your arms. Take a big step out to the left and drop your arms parallel to the floor. Double check that your feet are parallel to each other. You can turn your toes in and your heels out a little bit. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, forward fold. If you'd like to take a tripod headstand, you can do that here. Otherwise, hold the outside of your ankles or put four fingers under the knife edge of each foot. Look straight down at your mat. You want to lift your chin so that you're facing the mat and lift your heart. That's going to straighten your upper back. As you inhale, press your legs somewhat straight and exhale, pull, maybe with the goal of touching the third eye to the mat or in that direction. Every inhale, your weight can shift forward more into your toes. Every exhale, pull, creating a nice long spine, maybe feeling a nice stretch through the inner thighs. Breathing here. Release. Hands on your hips, lift your chest, chin and eyes. Now friends, we normally take a trikonasana, triangle pose here, but I want to switch things up today and do a hip opener. So you can return your feet back to meet and take a quarter turn to the front of the room. We're gonna go into a dragon pose here. So let's find a tabletop. Starting with the right side, place your right foot outside of your right hand. You're creating two parallel lines with your right thought, uh, shin and your right arm. Tuck your left toes to inch the back knee back once or twice. Our goal here is to create more of a straight line through that hip area. See if your right knee is wanting to relax out to the right and the right foot coming onto its knife edge here. Now, if you want to do the straight arm dragon, let your hips drop and lift your heart. We're letting gravity work in that direction, dropping hips towards the floor, or maybe a bit more like that direction. If you want to go a bit deeper, you can drop down to the forearms. Some yogis will like to lay even lower. Breathing into your hips here. Taking about seven rounds of mindful breath. As we meditate on the breath in deep stretches, we are connecting to our body. We're connecting to the mechanisms of releasing tension from not only our muscles, not only from our physical body, but from our mind as well. Those are a simultaneous process. Gently rise back to straight arms and we're gonna add into a twisted dragon. Place your left hand onto the midline of your mat. Place your right hand on your right thigh. Drop your hips low, lift your heart high, look over your right shoulder, press and twist. Breathe here. You can hold just right here, or option to reach back and grab your foot. To be a dragon grabbing its tail. Keep in mind your hamstring could cramp if you're a bit tight through the hamstrings as you reach back there, so be careful. Release. You can send your right leg back to tabletop. Feel free to rock your hips from side to side. We'll do our second side here. Place your left foot outside of your left hand. Tuck your right toes to inch the right knee back once, twice, or thrice. Now see if your left knee is wanting to relax out to the left with the foot coming onto its next edge. Not everyone's foot is going to want to do that. That's totally okay. 
your straight arm dragging, let your hips drop and lift your heart. Letting gravity do all the work to bring your pelvis and hips towards the earth. Maybe you hold there with straight arms, or maybe you come down to four arms. Or look. Taking the sacred time to be with yourself. Taking the sacred time to love yourself, to nourish yourself. Taking great care of your physical incarnation, giving yourself the peace that we all deserve. Let's gently rise to straight arms for the twisted dragon. Place your right hand on the midline, left hand on your left thigh. Really let your hips drop and lift your heart. Look over your left shoulder. You can lightly press and twist. Breathe here. Option to reach back. Grab your foot, a dragon grabbing its own tail. Release. Send your left leg back to your tabletop and feel free to rock your hips from side to side. Amazing job, my friends. Let's meet back standing on the mat in Tadasana. Amazing job on that fiery dragon hip opener. One of the most intense hip openers that I know. Next up, we'll do our pyramid pose. I guess I'll actually give you the side view again for this pose. Step your right foot forward and your left foot a little out to the left and rotate it out to the left in a 45 degree angle. That is our pyramid foot stance. Place your hands on your hips and press your left hip forward. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, forward fold over your right leg. Now your hands can come to the mat here if that helps you. Tuck your chin into your chest and try to connect your forehead to your knee or your shin. If you're having trouble making that connection, you can bend your right knee to help that happen. You can work on straightening the right leg as much as possible. And then you can work on peeling your right hip back and pushing your left hip forward. This helps to deepen the stretch into the hip and glute and hamstring, really sending your weight back and a little bit to the left. As you breathe here for five, four, three, two, one. Release hands on your hips, lift your chest, chin, and eyes. To get to the other side, you can simply swivel on your heels towards the front of the room. Press your right hip forward. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, forward fold. Your hands can come down to the mat here if you like. Tuck up your chin into your chest. Bring your forehead towards your knee or your chin. Really actively squeeze your chin to your chest. That's your Jalimba Haravanda, your throat lock. Squeezing your throat, releasing the back of your neck. You can work on straightening the left leg. You can peel your left hip back. Push your right hip forward. Breathe into this posture. Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Hands on your hips. Lift your chest, chin, and eyes. Step your feet back to meet. Tadasana. Mountain pose. Coming back to the breath. Amazing job, my friends. We are on to our last standing posture of this practice which is Vrikshasana tree pose. Inhale, circle sweep. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. We're gonna create our tree legs. Your right foot can become a kickstand on your left ankle. If you want to go a little higher, bring it up to your calf. If you wanna go higher still, come up to your thigh. Make sure you're not pressing into your knee. That could cause an injury. Trees. Send your roots down through your left foot, grounding you to the earth. 
and grow your branches. For today, let's keep our palms touching with the opposite thumb wrapped around the opposite hand. And open up your right hip a little bit by sending your right knee back and tucking your tailbone underneath you. Draw your core up and in. Now start to reach long. Reach your fingertips towards the sky as much as you can. Press down through your left leg as much as you can. Lengthen yourself. You're getting into the deepest part of your core here, your psoas. You know, yogis, every day we have the chance to let go of some negative energy. So just like trees release their leaves, we can release negative energy to the earth. Letting it fall, like those falling leaves. The earth will always recycle it into something new and good. Service you your arms. We can feel all of that new space we create when we let go of what's no longer serving our journey. Bring your hand back to heart center. Release your feet to meet. You can wiggle out your knees here for a little release through the feet, knees, hips, and low back. Second side of tree. You can mirror what you did on the first side if that was feeling good. You can always switch it up as well. Trees send energetic roots grounding you to the earth and grow your branches. Just like before, keep your palms touching with the opposite thumb wrapped around the opposite hand. Open up your left hip, sending your left knee back. Tuck your tailbone under. It's like a mula bandha. Reach long overhead. Press down for your right leg. Extending your leg up, down, out of its hip socket. Lengthen yourself. Lift your ribs. Breathe. Now this time, let's turn our tree into a cactus, creating 90 degree cactus arms. Lean back slightly as you lift your heart. Squeeze your shoulder blades, lift your chin. Turn your palms up a little bit. Breathe into your heart space. This is a time to open your heart to yourself, to find compassion and love and acceptance for yourself. Your self-care and your self-love is not selfish. It actually serves all of humanity. Open your arms wide, circle, sweep. Gather up all of this loving energy. Bring it into your heart center. You deserve to feel all of that love. Keeping your hands at heart center, release your feet to me. Close your eyes. Take this moment to recall your intention for the practice. Take a moment to really thank yourself. You didn't have to wake up early to get on this call, but you are here. You're here to honor your body your mind and your spirit. And if you'd like to honor your practice, if it feels right to you, you can honor your practice with a bow. Now is a wonderful time for our second water break of class. Cheers, my friends. Amazing job, everyone. For some reason, I always run a little bit longer when I do a Zoom class than when I do classes in person. Maybe that's a good thing, we're going slow and mindful. So I'm gonna bring you guys over here to the mat. For today, just because of time and also because of like our general vibe, I'm gonna go right into some stretches rather than the back strengthening series. If you are a huge fan of Hoppe's back strengthening series, feel free to do that on your own after practice sometime later today. We're gonna start off on the mat in tabletop for our deep stretches. Starting off with our half pigeon pose. Place your right shin across your mat. So you saw me place the shin there from a tabletop, but you could also enter from the downward dog if you prefer. Then tuck your left toes to inch your left knee back along the mat once or twice. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, come down to your depth. Maybe your depth is your forearms. Maybe you like to lay a bit lower. Taking 45 seconds here, just to breathe, just to be a human being. Every inhale breath, you're sending some love and gratitude to your right hip, right glute, right leg. Every exhale, that release of tension 
is simultaneous from your muscles, from your mind, from your spirit. It's all connected. The word yoga is a verb, yoga in Sanskrit, to connect, to unite. We unite ourselves, our body, our mind, our spirit. We unite together as a community. You are not alone in this time. Together we breathe. Gently rise up to your straight arms and send your right leg back, coming into tabletop. Feel free to rock your hips from side to side. And then we'll come into the second side. Place your left shin across your neck. Tuck your right toes to inch your right knee back once or twice. By the way, my shin looks parallel or perpendicular across the mat. It doesn't need to look perpendicular though. We all have different angles of the hip bones. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, come down to your deck. Maybe you come to the forearms. Maybe you lay to the mat. Just like when we practice poses, they become easier for us. The same is true for states of being, this peace, this tranquility. The more we access it, the more we can come back to maintain this feeling. And if the feeling leaves, that's okay. You know, it will return. We can always find our way home to center. Gently rise back to straight arms. And this time to come out of the posture, sit down onto your left hip and swing your right leg around and forward. You'll end up with the right leg out straight, left foot in at your inner thigh. Sit tall and turn to face your right foot. Inhale, circle, sweep. Exhale, forward fold over your right leg. Tuck your chin into your chest. Bring your forehead in the direction of your knee or your shin. Breathe into your lower back here. Now some yogis might find themselves stuck about here. I find that that's because of tight hamstrings more than a tight lower back. So if you let your knee bend, you might be able to lift and drape your back more over, just like we were doing in the forward folds. So that, that's just a little tip for you. Gently rise back to your seat and switch out your legs. Find your sit bones, sit nice and tall, and turn to face your left foot. Inhale, circle, sweep. Exhale, forward fold. Tuck your chin into your chest. Let your forehead fall in the direction of your knee or shin. By taking this sacred time for yourself, you are thanking your body. You're setting a vibration of gratitude for the rest of your day. Gratitude for your health. Gratitude for this experience. Getting to be a human being. Getting to explore and love. Gently rise back to your seat. Send both legs out long in front of you. And come to lay all the way onto your back. Our final few postures, Ananda Balasana, happy baby. Place both feet up as if you're in a wide squat on the ceiling. You can take hold of the outside of your feet or the inside of your feet. You can also hold your legs or backs of your thighs. Pull your legs wide apart and then start to pull down, lowering your knees a little bit more towards the earth. Then feel what changes as you start to press your feet up into your hands. Feel how that can help to lower your sacrum and your tailbone towards the earth. Take some deep belly breaths here into your hips, your low back, your pelvis. Breathing into the deepest part of the core. These deep belly breaths that all happy babies know. 
And we take these deep breaths into the belly. We stimulate our vagus nerve, which is in charge of the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest, the relaxation circuit. Ah, letting it all go. Yogi's coming into our final twist now. Release your knees to this 90 degree angle. You can spread your arms out in a T shape. If you want a deeper twist, keep both knees up. If you want a lighter twist, keep just the right knee up. Then let your knee or knees fall over to your left. And you can turn your head to the right. Lately, I've been liking this new technique I learned where you reach the right arm up, and then your eyes, head, and neck can follow it all the way to the floor. I'm finding that this integrates the upper spine more into the twist. From here, we let your breath Gravity, do all of the work. Every inhale will lengthen your spine. Every exhale, surrender to the twist. Use your core to gently bring everything back to center. Double check your good 90 degree knees. If you want the lighter twist, leave just the left knee up this time. Then let your knee or knees fall over to the right. And you can turn your head to the left or you can reach your left arm up. Your eyes, head and neck can follow it all the way to the floor. From here, we tune into the breath to deactivate the muscles. as we yoga, as we connect to that deepest peace, tranquility, the loving awareness within us. Deep down beneath our identity, beneath our form, is our center of loving awareness. You are the universe looking out through your eyes, finding love in your heart for everything that you see in this universe. Use your core to bring everything back to center. For our final active pose, bring both knees into your chest. Give your legs a big hug here. This realigns your spine after the twist. But more importantly, it realigns our hearts in the daily practice of self-love. As you give yourself this hug, take a moment to unapologetically give yourself what all living beings deserve. Love. Gratitude acceptance, compassion. We can be a friend and supporter to ourselves. We can give ourselves the love and support we give everyone else. That light that you shine outward to the rest of the world, you can shine it inward too. To thank yourself, to illuminate the good that you do with your actions and deeper than all that, the good that you are simply by being yourself. Give yourself this big hug. No reason to hold back any love from yourself. Take a deep inhale. And exhale, release. Your final Javasana meditation. You can spread out and lay however is comfortable for you. You can let it all go. Every exhale is like a wave from head to toe, washing away any stress, any worries. Every exhale, you can let your muscles release. You can let your bones sink heavier and heavier to the floor. Staying present with this feeling you created. Staying present with the breath flowing through. And 
meditation is not about stopping thoughts. It's about being here and now. It's about feeling this moment. It's about feeling your body. No rush the next moment. always go deeper into the stillness, sacredness of this moment. We can let this moment be perfectly enough just as it is. We can let other people and ourselves be perfectly enough just as we are. We can get in tune with this yin energy of not needing to change things, not fighting the moment, not fighting ourselves. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in this present moment. I know this is a wonderful moment. Yogis, if you'd like to continue your meditation, Feel free to do that. If you'd like to seal our practice together, you can gently rise to a seated position, taking your sweet time to get there. No rush to the next moment. You can sit however is comfortable for you. On an inhale, slightly lift your chest. Exhale, tuck your chin. Inhale, circle sweep your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to heart center. My friends, you are not alone in this time. We are together. Taking great care of yourself is one of the best things you can do for all of humanity. You can be there for others simply just simply by just saying hello, just asking how they are. You never know how much you mean to others. You never know how much you're fulfilling your purpose with little everyday actions, reaching out with kindness. The light in me sees, respects, and cherishes the divine light in each of you. Namaste. going to unmute everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks, Jake, so much. Wonderful class, as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. That was really fun. Best way to start off our day. Thank you so much, Jake. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. I needed that so much. Me too. You know, Thank you so much. It's so I'm weird here. I can't find a Hatha class like this anywhere. <laughs> there are classes um, called Hatha, but they're not the poses. Uh -huh, they're not the 26. No. So, I mean, uh, honestly, I really miss practicing because I don't have the motivation to do it myself, even though I've been doing other yoga before I uh -huh. even came down. But um, yeah. thanks for the reminder for the great, great instruction. <laughs> Appreciate you. I appreciate you too. And I'm really thankful you're here. And just as a reminder to everybody, this link that got you here 
it's like the same link for all of our classes. So it's just a matter of what time you come to this link. And if you're here at the right times, which is 7 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. on any weekday, or the weekends, it's, I believe, 10 and 4, or 10.30 and 4, one of the two, I'll get back to you. Um, you're going to get a free yoga class here. So keep coming back to this link. So thank, thank you. you for being here, Phyllis. Bye. It's Jake. Thanks, Reagan. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks for being here, Gina. Thank you. Thank you, you Jake. Thank you, Jake, so much. And as Margaret, I think it was Margaret that said that you really, your words, your instructions are profoundly with love and, and very, very well. I'm really grateful. I like your class a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just love, you know, that I get to have this opportunity. And just as much as you might think I'm helping you with the class, you guys help me too by being here. And sharing. Yeah, both ways, it is. Love is always both ways. Exactly. Have Thank a you great day. Thank you. Bye, guys. Mike, thanks for coming. Bye -bye. You too. See you next time. Always great to start the day out with some hanging out with Mike. <laughs> the broga. We hold down the broga. Exactly. <laughs> mom, thanks for being here. Thank Love you, Mom. <laughs> thanks, Allison and Heather. Thanks, Gina. You guys have a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time. Stay okay. tuned to the, uh, all the social media. You can see when um, different classes are happening. All of our teachers are super awesome, so try out their classes.